close brushes with the authorities. Oh my god, you see the guards in my room, you see? They're complaining already. And heart stopping tricks. Oh! Oh my god, are you okay? How did I get here? Why am I doing this at 40? All to get into an underground bike community in Singapore. <laughs> I'm Roz. And I love experiencing all things unusual and unexpected. You get it? <laughs> so I am on the hunt for some of the weirdest. Oh my god. Can I get out of here? Wildest. And wackiest hobbies in Singapore. This means spending time with people I never knew existed. Oh, intense, man. And exploring sides of Singapore I never thought I would. Wow, this is really nice. All to learn how to be a fringe fan. This is no ordinary bicycle. It's a fixed gear bike, better known as a fixie. Just one gear, no problem. Move the pedals, move the wheels. Pedal backwards to reverse. A typical fixie doesn't even have brakes. So to stop, you must apply pressure on the pedals. This is like the ultimate hipster ride. And there is an entire community of at least a thousand fixie riders here in Singapore. Still, I've never heard of this community until this. Viral videos of fixie riders behaving badly. Hey, Full disclosure, I'm a terrible bike rider, okay? In order to move in a straight line, I would need training wheels. I couldn't even tell apart these fixie riders from regular bike riders until they were identified in the comments section. I really want to know if these guys deserve their young punk or a pest of the streets reputation. So hopefully my lack of skills won't disqualify me from infiltrating this fixie subculture. But I can't just show up and be like, yo, let me join, right? So, helping me make inroads into the community is Harish Daniel. Among fixie riders, he is known as Daniel Kaiser. Kaiser as in German for emperor. And that's because he's a de facto leader in the fixie community. I'm known for the mass rides that I've organized biannually. Okay, hold up. What exactly is a mega mass ride? Go, 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 go. This is it. Informal races with several hundred riders taking part. They cycle together around the whole island. In fact, Daniel is organizing another one in a week's time and I really want to be a part of it. But first, I want to know what the community here is like. Daniel tells me it is made up of three generations. The Golden Generation. They are around like 30 plus to 40. They are the ones who started these rides. The Silver Generation. There is people like me. We are the one carrying on the legacy from the Golden Era. And the Bronze Generation. The youngsters, they are very active. They are mostly stunt driven. I want to meet these guys. Sure. I can bring you one of the uh, most favorite spots. If, like me, you want to join the Cool Kids Fixie Club, this is the place to be on a Friday night. The system is called Fast Fridays. Riders from every corner of Singapore, after school and after their work, meet here. I'll be here to oversee them. Okay. Because usually they're young kids. Why is this one of their favourite spots? They like secluded places, places with convenience stores. And at the same time, a lot of people here, they like to showcase their talent. There are fixie races who go for speed on rides, but here, the tricksters take centre stage. You see the guy riding over there? Mm -hmm. That's Ethan. Hey, bro. 
one of the group called Google Gina. If you're wondering, Gina is the Hokkien word for kid. And 16-year-old Ethan leads about 25 riders in Gogo Gina, one of the largest groups frequenting this hideout. Hey, Hello. how does one get into Gogo Gina? I don't have to have good skill in tricking. Or racing. Have a nice bike. About once every day. People try to join, but usually I have to turn them down. Why is your group so popular that everybody wants to join? Some say my edits are interesting, then you want to be part of it. Edits are basically self-filmed videos of stunts or rides that riders share on social media. That is so cool. But how do you determine who's the best though? There's one way, mm -hmm. it's uh, called Game of Bikes. It can be as uh, many, up to like 50 tricksters, but mm -hmm. for now it's two. One rider will first perform a trick. The next rider will then have to follow suit. If it's a flop, the rider gets a letter B. Whoever gets all the way to B I K E first loses. That's Fabian, right? Uh, yeah. 180 hop. Okay. This shoe is gonna uh, try now. Did he nail it? Yeah, yep. he did. So that's like a tie. Yeah. Whoa, what's that? Kill speed. Whoa! Whoa! But he didn't land it. Oh, that's not a good one. Whoa! Oh my god, are you okay? Yeah. It is normal. Huh? It's okay, it's okay. It's Your bike scratch, huh? It's skin. Do you want to get a alcohol rub? Just, just get some wet tissue paper, guys. As far as injuries go though, the guys tell me this is nothing. Nothing. There's been a worse one which happened like last year to my friend. Uh, he was at uh, MBS Bowl tricking, then he fell down sideways, hit his head. He couldn't remember anything for like a few days. Oh, and his head was bleeding. Is it worth the, the risk? To some maybe worth, uh, but it's more of like uh, showing off your skills. It gives you like a sense of pride. You go everywhere, people are like, hey, you're that guy, you can do this, you can do that. Okay, I kind of get the appeal of having bragging rights. But before I could even reach out to more riders, this happened. You see the guards are coming out of the complaint. They're complaining already. So does this happen often, like the police coming and patrolling? Yes, usually um, at these timings, it's yeah. more like if they're doing nonsense, you see? Okay. The security guards from the building and the hotel as well. That's technically not illegal. It's not illegal. It's, it's not. only the owners of the private properties yes. that you guys congregate at, complain Correct. and then the cops come in. Definitely. The riders dispersed after the authorities showed up. And since we didn't want to get in trouble with the law, we decided to end our visit to Fast Fridays fast. Last night's Fast Friday was quite the eye-opener. Being there, it really felt like they were a tight-knit group with their own lingo and subculture. It's cool, you know, to be part of the Fixies community, even if it means getting injuries. Oh, oh my God, are you okay? Or getting a name taken down by cops. I get it. I mean, when I was younger, I used to skip ballet class to go to fire tea dance, which is like an afternoon disco session because that's where all the cool kids were, so I wanted to be there. Anyway, Ethan from Gogo Ginas has invited me to go on a mass ride with them, but first, I need to get myself a bike. And guess who's working here? What? A TikTok superstar, Xavier Lim. 16-year-old Xavier's fixie stunts have received over 5 million likes on TikTok, where he has close to 500,000 followers. How fast are you growing on a day-to-day -day now? In a week, maybe 1,000, 2,000 followers in growth. Damn! That's what I get in a, a couple of months. <laughs> so who do you think your main followers are, your most loyal supporters? Those that are around my age group. I'm looking for a little bike, a fixie of my own. What's the price range of a, a fixie? Price ranges from hundred dollars up to few thousand. My bike's worth about two thousand five at this point. What about your friend's bike? Oh, he's gonna make me look bad. Why? But, uh, his bike actually costs about 
3,000 to 4,000. Are you serious? His bike's actually one of the most expensive bikes what? on the market for How... fixed gear. Did your father buy this bike for you? Uh, no, I spend it on mine. What do you have to do to, to earn money to get this bike? I've been saving for many years. How many years? Like four. How much money do you get every day for pocket money? Uh, 15. Do you do part-time jobs? Uh, used to, but not anymore. This is crazy. What makes you want to work so hard to buy this bike? Before I started Fix, I saw Xavier on TikTok. Yeah. So yeah, that what inspired me to get a dog yeah. mentor. One of the important areas for Fix here is actually the look of it. For this one, the Screen Ranger, I'm probably the only person in the East with this green bike. So if people saw this bike like parked, would they know it's yours? Most probably because of the unique colouring, the spokes and the build itself, it's very me. I like to have my bike loud to make me look brighter. It's kind of like in the sneaker world, people wanting to get like the rarest Jordans and then for the fixie world, it's all about the bikes. Yes, other than the skills level. Since my riding skills are pretty basic, nothing so flashy for me. I opted for a simple black bike with hand brakes installed because I'm cool like that. But this still costs a whopping $800. I'm catching up with Daniel again to go through his plan for the Mega Mass ride. Now that I'm a proud owner of a Fixie, I should be all good to take part, right? The total distance will be 110 kilometers. 110 kilometers? Are you kidding, bro? Yes, I'm serious. <laughs> The ride I'm joining is in fact a Round Island Mega Mass ride organised by Daniel. Details of the ride are blasted on Mega Mass Ride's official Instagram account and all riders are welcome to join. Due to the COVID this year, so we need to change the format. Each rider has to have their own groups and riding in a groups of five. So, own time, own target. If you are misbehaving on the road, if you do not like ride on a single file, or if you're like you know being rowdy and congregating all the different lanes, right? The authorities will come after me. You see. What is making you wanna go ahead with this event despite the risk? What I'm afraid is that if I do not actually proceed with this mess, right? The tradition that has been around for a couple of years, right? People will start to lose interest. Yeah, there's a, so little of your community to begin with, right? The pressure is really on me because I really love this sport and I do not want you to die just like that. So, I just got myself a fixie, mm -hmm. okay? Disclaimer, I can't even ride a bike well, okay? Let alone a fixie. Uh -huh. I don't know if I'll be ready for this Saturday's mass ride. Don't worry, okay? I got my friends to come over and teach her to ride. Right. Guess what? Right. A bike I cannot ride. <laughs> Guys, I think we can help out with that for her. Yes. So basically, Hardy will be behind you to support. Okay. And then Kai will guide you along the way by holding. So like this? Then you kick off the floor with the other foot and then you go for the pedal, look forward, go. Okay, you're going to hold me, right? You're not going to yes. let me fall, right? Okay. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even balance now. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Okay, okay let's go. <laughs> And just like that, I feel my dreams of riding a fixie rolling away from me. Yeah. Doesn't seem to trouble my cameraman though. Was it easy to ride? It was easy to ride, but it wasn't easy to stop. You feel like you need to avoid people and uh, really try to get out of people's way. Yay, you did it for the team! Now can you take this heavy camera back? What a jealous here! Oh my god! Okay, I feel like a fraud, but I still want to experience what being a fixie rider is like. So... Don't worry, Ross. We got you covered. Okay. We have a tandem bike just for you. Oh, cool. I like that. I have absolutely no shame. Yes, 
see there's people will be whichever that is fast, yeah. they will go first. But then the slow people will be behind. But we will stick together. Okay, so you help pace each other also lah. Yes. Cheers guys, that was amazing, especially to Zach. <laughs> <laughs> that up there was crazy. <laughs> that poor little guy was like really struggling. <laughs> okay, wait, so I got a question. I've been told lah, word on the street is that, you know, the Fixie community has a really bad rap. What are your thoughts on it? Honestly, it's kind of always the younger ones. There was this recent case. There was this particular group. They went to ride inside Jewel. They were riding on the Travelator. The Instagram story that was posted by them has been circulated in Facebook. That's where the police actually direct messaged them. Wait, you guys were like 16, 15, right? Mm -hmm. When you started, you said. Yes. Were you like that when you were younger? To be honest, <laughs> we were once as rebellious. I think the memorable ones were me and Kai. We went to Dakota Crescent uh -huh. and we trespassed the building. Police cars actually passing by and they saw us. And then what happened? We got screened and then we our identities were taken down. Honey doesn't look like he does any of that. I think he is. He's yeah. a good boy. There's this day that I beat the red light. So that's where I got hit by a car and I got 21 stitches on my head. Yeah. Ever since that day I started to use Elma. If you guys could do it, why can't the younger ones do it too? That period, there's no Instagram. Yeah. It wasn't like active much. Then we was like, hey, you guys never record, right? You guys never record. Right? <laughs> then it's like, yeah, yeah, we didn't, we didn't, okay. It's called do whatever you want, but don't get caught. What sets you apart now from your younger selves? We've grown and, yeah. you know, we don't we don't feel the need to show off and, and do dumb things just to impress others. So right now, we, we really just want to ride our bikes. Daniel and his friends are frustrated that some bronze generation riders are ruining their public image. But I think underneath that frustration lies this desire to protect the hobby they love so much. And in Daniel's case, it's been, what, 10 years? What I want to know is, what do the younger Fixie riders think of their seniors blaming them? Do the younger riders feel that they're bringing down the reputation of the Fixie community? Today is the day of Daniel's mega mass ride. Make sure they follow road etiquettes. If there is any medical or any bike support, please inform me. Hey, wait for me! This year, close to 150 Fixie riders from ages 15 to 30 are joining in the fun. One single lift. Mega Miss Ride has always been a special place in my heart. Despite the age, the race, the backgrounds, we are still united as one. We ride fixed gear, it's cool as it is, that's the beauty of it. While Daniel is patrolling further along the route... Hey guys! Hi Ethan! I'm at the starting point with Gogo -Go Gina. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. It's a big black steed. Think of it as like the Harley <laughs> Davidson of bicycles. <laughs> and I also got this t-shirt that you sent me, thank you very much. Uh, no problem. I'm one of the Gogo -Go Ginas now. <laughs> yes. Oh, your love! <laughs> I'm trying my best! <laughs> Ethan, can you just lead the way so that me and Chu will sure, just follow sure, you sure. at the back? Left, left. <laughs> What's your usual speed, uh, Ethan? 40. Now it's what? Now it's like 10. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for accommodating this noob. <laughs> Are you guys holding hands? Woo! Oh my god. <laughs> It's my first time riding on an on-road cycling lane as vast and endless as this. And I have to say, it feels liberating. So how long before you all get tired, usually? Usually at the last stretch, you get, you get tired already. Yeah. But then, you like, do a burst up. Boy, last, last turn already. They're so fast! Wonder, We're also drafting, two of us, you see? <laughs> you 
you guys just did like the round island route. Why do you like riding fixier bikes so much? It's like when we cycling, we feel like sense of freedom. When you get a good swerve, you just feel like that sense of accomplishment. It's like, yes, I did it. Sometimes I just ride with friends because I feel really lonely. Mm. <laughs> and I got no real friends. Okay. Outside of cycling. It's okay, you got me, man. Oh. Yes, I got you. Recently, there's been a lot of viral videos of like fixed gear riders performing dangerous stunts and riding dangerously. How much of yourselves do you see in that? Or is that just the black sheep? I'm more of like a half-half. So like last year, when I threw a huge birthday, right, mm -hmm. for myself, oh, yeah! I just invited like anyone to come for the ride. Yep. There were a lot of riders, so obviously police were called too. For so, like community, I, I hear stuff like, oh, this guy is stupid, man, hosted. Yeah. Birthday ride, so big, during phase two. Oh dear. And how did that make you feel? I feel like really bad because like, I'm the one that hosted the ride. I feel responsible for all of it. And the authorities are clamping down on fixed gear bikes. On 8th January 2020, a 13-year-old girl riding a fixie fell six storeys to her death from a multi-storey car park. Laws were later passed for all bikes on roads and public paths to have brakes installed from September 2021 onwards. So just as I've become an honorary member of this community, it could be their last hurrah. So how do you think um, the brake law kicking in in September is going to change the culture and the fixie community here? Those people that like, care more about the looks, right? They'll be like, um, ah, just, just quit, man. Like, a lot of my friends are quitting. Okay. You don't see them out anymore. Why? Not just because of the brake law. Family problems, girl problems, or just bored. Some say the community is toxic because people judge you. But I'm not leaving anytime soon. Uh. I've got many more things to do. Uh. Like what? Build a nicer bike, make more friends, be up there. What is up there? Daniel Kaiser's level. I'll be out there looking for more riders and bring them together. Yeah. So for you, it's really about finding family then? Yeah. I actually started out as like a loner, like rode alone. When I first met some of the tricksters, I found it like cool. So I started taking videos of them. This fixed gear community gives huge purpose in my life. I want to show the public, show like the world what the scene in Singapore fixed gear is. Like, show off the tricks, show how fast one can go. From the outside looking in, fixie riders do sometimes behave like young punks and pests of the streets. Here's what I think though, if they simply wanted to wreck havoc, right, there's plenty of other things they could do, like vandalise property or steal things. But instead, this group of teenagers, through riding their fixies and performing tricks on them, I think they're just dying to show off a skill that they work so hard to perfect and to find a community that they would not find anywhere else. And for what it's worth, Tonight, after riding with them, I felt so young, like I shaved 20 years of my life. And you know what? I might just join them again on their next ride, but this time I'll bring training wheels. On the tour in Singapore, bro.